and we are in the studios of Access Framingham TV in Framingham, Massachusetts, and this is part of the ongoing Natick Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan, a coordinator for the project. Today we are interviewing Viviana Cordova, coordinator of the Mass Women's Veterans Network based in Boston. Welcome, Viviana. Hi, Maureen. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Now, what is the Women's Veterans Network? So the Women Veterans Network is a central resource for women veterans of the Commonwealth and we provide them with benefit information and resources on the federal, state and local levels. We also hold various events throughout the year so that women veterans are able to network with one another. Um, it's really important since women veterans don't have as strong of a support system as our male counterparts do. So that's the primary reason why we hold these events and we also have various outreach um, methods that we also hold in order to outreach to the 27,000 women veterans in Massachusetts. How long has it been around? The network was established by the Department of Veteran Services in 1997. Um, it was become, especially after the Gulf War, it was becoming more and more evident that women needed a lot of these uh, networks in place and um, uh, veteran services established uh, the WVN mm -hmm. then. You just mentioned uh, some of the programs offered through the network. Can you be a little more specific? Sure. So when a woman veteran registers, and they can be uh, whatever era, they could have served from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, um, any any uh, discharge classification. Um, you don't have to uh, be a combat vet either, as long as you enlisted. Mm -hmm. um, so once they do that, they receive a packet of information on the network, and they can either join the Speakers Bureau, which gives them an opportunity to um, be part of uh, various events where they can share their stories. Um, we're always getting requests from various towns and cities that requesting women veterans um, to come speak at, um, uh, especially for Veterans Day, Memorial Day, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So they can uh, join the Bureau. Um, they are also uh, available uh, to join the Volunteer Committee where they can, they can host their own events in their own city or town. Um, but primarily we're there for them to give them support and information that they may need. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned that it's not just for veterans of recent conflicts, but for um, as far as World War II. And you mentioned a woman veteran before the interview saying, I didn't know I was a veteran. We did. We got a call last later last year, and she was uh, close to 90 years old. She had served in World War II. She was a pilot, and she had no idea she was a veteran. And she was, uh, for a very long time, for most of her life, she was <laughs> going around without any VA benefits, anything. So uh, we were able to connect her with numerous amount of resources, and um, we actually honored her at our at our uh, World War II luncheon for women mm -hmm. veterans this year. So. It was great. That was wonderful. And this is not, even though this is based in Boston, you serve all over the Commonwealth. Yes, our, our headquarters are in Boston, but uh, we're from Salem to Fall River, uh, the Berkshires, and um, since we can't be everywhere at every time, uh, mm -hmm. that's why we encourage women to get involved in the network, to register, and to host their own socials in their own area, and we'll do our best to help them and provide them with the information that they need. Mm -hmm. And what do you do as coordinator? So as coordinator, I, uh, I actually manage the direct assistance cases that, uh, that come into the network. Um, I make sure that all our resources and benefits are up to date. We also have a steering committee within the network. And the steering committee is based of, um, is made up of all the women veteran program managers throughout the state. And every VA has one at, at their women's clinic. It's also composed of uh, clinicians, women veterans themselves. Um, so we meet once a month and we discuss the women veteran issues that are on the national level, local levels, um, mm -hmm. state levels, and um, to keep us up to date. Okay. So Viviana, what are some of the challenges facing women veterans today? That's a great question. Um, mainly women veterans face similar challenges compared to our male counterparts. We 
uh, coming back with PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a high amount of MST claims that are coming back from military sexual trauma, which mm -hmm. that means. Um, we have actually the highest percentage of divorce rates are from women veterans. It's about close to 13% compared to males, which is 2%. And coming back to a divorce from coming back from a deployment can also lead to uh, financial hardships, which can lead to homelessness. And women veterans are actually four times as likely to become homeless after a deployment, which is a very cold reality um, that we are uh, challenging at the Department of Veterans Services through various programs right now. Um, body armor and health issues, physical health health issues is an issue, mm -hmm. uh, mental health issues, um, and basically being, not having enough um, time to decompress after a war is especially common in women veterans, as women are the nucleus of the family, so we have to come back, be the nurturing mother, we have to be the wife again, and we, we can't, um, we they can't afford to spend time um, focusing on themselves. Many women are the caretakers, so it's that time to um, to decompress that's lacking in women veterans, and issues continue. Those are some challenges. Mm -hmm. Women comprise the largest growing segment among the veteran population. Overall, do you believe women veterans are well served by the VA and other programs such as the network? I think in the past the VA ha wasn't really equipped to serve women mm -hmm. um, and the challenges really weren't being met but I think that we definitely are much better placed than we used to be. Mm -hmm. um, the, the VA has uh, taken on tremendous strides especially in their current ads where um, I'm not sure if you've seen it it says um, please don't call me mister and it, it speaks volumes because as a veteran myself that uses the VA it's, it's really discouraging um, when you're on on the phone and the person on the other line says um, can I please speak to the veteran or um, you know they're calling your name but they're adding a mister in front of it in the waiting room so mm -hmm. um, so things issues like that the VA are actually addressing and they're highlighting and they're creating a women veteran clinics specifically with uh, women veteran nurses or uh, women physicians um, so these are large strides that the VA is taking especially with their women veteran program managers. Mm -hmm. As coordinator, you conduct a lot of outreach programs throughout the state. What are the most popular programs the network offers, and does it differ from region to region? Uh, we try to outreach to each region uh, equally. Um, one of our largest events that we do um, spread out throughout the state is our Women Veterans Conference every summer. Mm -hmm. We have a Women Veteran Appreciation Day at the State House in the fall, um, but primarily we try to outreach to all the regions equally. Um, our biggest effort right now is to outreach to the western uh, mm. side of the state since it's always a challenge. <laughs> Having been an alumnus of UMass Amherst, I can understand that point <laughs> quite well. Yeah. You also handle the Women's Veterans Appreciation Day, which was uh, just held at the State House, mm -hmm. each, uh, and it's held annually uh, just before Veterans Day yep. in November. Uh, tell us more about that. So this year we actually had our eighth annual, um, mm -hmm. and it's held at the State House every year, and it's it's a great way to honor women veterans who have served past, present, but also uh, a way for us to select a one woman um, who has done an incredible amount of accomplishments in the military, but not only in the military, a woman who has served outside the military mm -hmm. and has enhanced the lives of female veterans. So um, it's, uh, I don't want to call it a contest, but mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, an event that where women veterans are actually nominated for the Deborah Sampson Award, which, mm -hmm. as you know, she was the first woman to disguise herself and serve in the American mm -hmm. Revolution. Um, and we can honor her and um, honor all the women, really. Mm -hmm. And describe a little bit about this year's winner. 
So this year's winner was Master Sergeant Karen Smith, and she um, did an amazing, amazing, um, had amazing accomplishments within the National Guard. But most importantly, she actually served um, through the uh, uh, various nonprofit organizations. She mentors uh, female veterans outside of her occupation. She offers free child care for deployed mm. uh, families. Um, so she's done, she's done a lot. And we, that's what we look at as a committee. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other anecdotes about some of the women veterans who have been helped by the network? Sure. Um, you know, it's uh, women from the World War II who didn't know they were veterans, women who um, have connected and have actually met best friends that they haven't seen since basic training at these conferences, mm -hmm. um, women that have been homeless and they don't really know who to reach out to and when they see a poster somewhere or somebody refers them to the network and another woman veteran is on the phone saying I understand where you're coming from mm -hmm. I'm going to do everything in my power to help you and you can reach me any time of the day um, I think hearing that and walking them through the process and helping them establish a brand new life and mm -hmm. knowing that there is life after war I think those are the best anecdotes that we mm -hmm. receive Suppose a woman veteran is watching this tape or someone who knows a woman veteran, what's the best way for them to contact the network? The best way to contact the network um, would be if you have a phone, you can call. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give the information? Why not? Mm -hmm. It's 617-210-5958. Uh, um, you can also go on the mass.gov forward slash veterans site. Um, all our information is on the website. There's Facebook, Massachusetts mm -hmm. Women Veterans. You can like us and uh, send us a message through there. Um, so pretty much you can just Google Women Veteran Network mm -hmm. and you'll find us. And you you also have a very, very good uh, newsletter that is published. It's biannually, our mm -hmm. newsletter, and where we include profiles of women veterans. We have all our events are on there, updates through the VA are on there, mm -hmm. um, all the new legislations for veterans are on there. Um, so feel free to, uh, you can actually download that on the uh, mm -hmm. state website as well. Um, and stay connected, register, submit your own story. Mm -hmm. We encourage that. Now, you mentioned that you're not only the coordinator for the Women Veterans Network, you are a veteran yourself. I am. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that. So, uh, well, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> when did, you were an Army veteran, right? I enlisted in the Army in 99. Mm -hmm. um, I served for a little under 10 years. Um, I was deployed to Iraq in 2005 for 14 months. Um, I was, uh, I assisted a combat stress unit um, and which was mainly composed of clinicians um, assisting the troops that were dealing with these issues and home front issues and um, mental health issues. Um, so we were uh, very close with the infantry units and assisting them and whatever they needed. Okay. And you were, uh, were you mostly Army Reserve or were you, were you active? Uh, besides the deployment in I Iraq. I was reserve. You were reserve. And you actually uh, recruited out of Framingham, right? I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what, what, overall, what do you feel your Army experience was like? I think when you join the military, it's, it's a culture within itself, especially as a woman. You need to keep up, not only physically, mentally, and, and every which way. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always going to be a challenge. Um, but if it I think the, the hard part is what makes it great. Um, and I think that any veteran can tell you that they'd do it again if they could. Mm -hmm. Okay, Viviana, is there anything else you would like to say about either your own experiences in the Army or as current coordinator for the Women's Veterans Network? Um, well, I think my experiences um, just led me to this amazing career and continuing to help veterans and I encourage every woman veteran to uh, to enroll and register into the Women Veterans Network and there's a whole network of women veterans that are eager to help, eager to serve and continue serving. Okay, Viviana Cordoba, thank you so much thank for uh, coming and talking about this wonderful network.